Well, it's certainly not going to be the same as Tuesday's match reaction, I'll tell you that. Not quite the same type of performance we've seen from Celtic this afternoon. However, we do escape Rugby Park with all three points. We return to the top of the table and we head into the international break with a great record and some great performances. The same can't be said about today. As I said, we escaped with three points, but that's all that matters at the end of the day. If you've got to win, doesn't matter if it's pretty, if it's ugly... It's just about that part, winning. So, yeah, come on, McNeil, Celtic 2. Let's talk about that. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. All that jazz. Hello, it's time for the match reaction. The last one we'll do for a couple of weeks. Of course, we head into the international break now. But Celtic head off into that international break with another win. And a great run of form which sees us keep ourselves top of the league, which has us in a fantastic position in the Champions League. Today's performance felt like one of those games where you knew the international break was coming. There was just something in the, the legs of the Celtic players this afternoon that showed you that they were desperate to get into this international break, and a, a break was merited, despite the fact that some of them will go on international duties with Scotland, Japan, and whoever else. This was a well-needed break by the looks of it, going off today's 90 minutes anyway. Um, and I think you could tell that before the game as well. The fact you could see the likes of Cameron and Carter Vickers, um, who was not even involved in the squad, not on the bench because of fatigue. Brendan Rodgers said he's fine, there's no worry about it, they just didn't want to risk him. That's the kind of thing that shows you that a rest is needed for Celtic. We have played a lot of football over these last few weeks. And let's not forget the fact that amongst it being a lot of football... We had such a tough run in, uh, in this kind of this wee spell of games from the last international break to now. We had Atalanta away from home, we had Leipzig at home, we had the League Cup semi final, we had other big games. No, it wasn't. We had Rugby Park on the plastic surface this afternoon. This was, I think it was seven games that we played in between the international breaks here, and all seven were difficult games in their own right. And to manage them the way we have, to leave them with the points that we have, both from a European point of view and a domestic point of view, is an incredible result for Celtic. To walk into this international break in the position that we are, from both point of views, you've got to take the hat off to the, to the players, to the manager. I'm trying to take positives from what was overall a negative afternoon for, for Celtic. You could argue the case, and I probably would say this myself if I was to give you my opinion domestically, maybe our worst performance of the season. I think I'd say so. Um, Kilmarnock, the first team that I've watched this year who probably should have beat Celtic. Um, they had more chances. I think they played better football. Uh, I think they were unlucky, to be quite honest. And Celtic, well, they had two big chances in the game. One of them was a bit fluky, and we managed to score them. Kilmarnock were the better side. Celtic didn't look at the races today, but it's the mark of great teams, isn't it? We've said this so many times over the years. When Brendan Rodgers was first in charge, when Ange Postecoglou was in charge, we've said this a lot in the span of this this channel being alive, that the mark of a great Celtic team is that even at their poorest, they can win games. And they've done that. And it might be through some great goalkeeping of Casper Schmeichel, it might be through a Callum McGregor cross that ended up in the back of the net. What matters is they won. And you can't take that away from them this, this afternoon. It was just one of those sluggish afternoons. It wasn't a great game of football to watch. Even for a neutral, I don't imagine it was a great game. Kilmarnock, absolutely the better team on the eye. I have I have no reservations in saying that. People might think I'm exaggerating when I say that. They were absolutely the better team on the eye this afternoon. I think they made they carved out better chances. They forced Casper Schmeichel into a lot of hard work. And this month, Casper Schmeichel has worked hard for his wages. That's one thing I need to say about today's match reaction. He has worked incredibly hard for his wages this month with big saves in the Champions League games, even in the domestic games. Uh, you go back to Hamden, he made a couple of big saves there as well, even when they were winning 6-0. This was a performance today that really solidified how good a keeper he actually is. People question Celtic goalkeepers all the time, whether it's Schmeichel, Hart, whoever. Do they have enough to do? It's the easiest job in the world, some people say. Sometimes you watch them face zero shots a game. Not today. Not to Can I just can I get the stats very quickly? Let me just let me look at the stats. 18 shots Kilmarnock had today against Celtic's 10. How many times do you see teams outshoot Celtic in a domestic game? Not many. Not Aberdeen last week couldn't do it. 
In fact, we beat them 6-0 last week. So Kilmarnock, who by all accounts haven't had a great season, turned up today with a bit of their thuggish style playing. Yes, I'm not going to hide away from saying it. Dirty buggers. They, they mixed that into some good football. They made life difficult for Celtic. And we didn't have a lot of answers to the questions they posed of us. We were leggy. We looked down and, and, and out at points of the game, in my opinion. What would the game have been like if Callum McGregor never scored at that vital moment? Could have been very different this afternoon. So, it's a lesson learned, I think, at Rugby Park today. I think one of the biggest things is we'll need to come away from that and, and look at how we stop that from happening again. Rugby Park is famously a ground where Brendan Rodgers has struggled in the past. Last year he lost there twice, for God's sake. So it was never going to be easy this afternoon. Um, and I guess on that note, you can take the major positive. Even though we played poorly, which has happened in the past, we managed to leave with three points. So it's not all negative. By any stretch. Let's do what we normally do and try and go through it half by half. The first half doesn't actually present an awful lot to talk about, does it? There are going to be players who will be singled out for their performances this afternoon, and rightly so, and I will try and cover them. Don't worry, I'm not going to just make excuses for certain players, which some people seem to think I do. Um, but we were generally really, really poor. I'll fast forward to the goal. Even the goal is poor to an extent. I mean, if Callum McGregor meant that, it's a great finish, but... He didn't mean it. It was intended to be a cross for Adam Ida. And Adam Ida just does enough to put Robbie McCrory off. Um, and it finds its way, its way into the back of the net. It's as simple as that. It's a bit of a fluke, to be quite honest with you. I love how Nicholas Kuhn has actually ended up picking up an assist for this goal. Which is insane. Um, he's just stat padding. Even Kuhn, who wasn't at the races today, still leaves with a goal and an assist. Which I think is nuts. Um, but McGregor's cross finds its way into the back of the net. It came at a really good time for Celtic because I don't know what the second half would have ended up like. I don't know how Kilmarnock would have treated the second half. I don't know how Celtic would have treated the second half if it went in as a nil-nil. But I guess that's an alternate universe we don't really need to worry about here. The first half, we just weren't there. Um, and, and I thought that the lack of creativity was telling from the off. Adamida had a very poor game today. And I can't just gloss over it and pretend it didn't happen. And yeah, I think that the whole team had a poor game in the first half, to be quite honest, especially from an attacking point of view. So maybe it's not just Ida's fault, but he didn't offer that output that you expect of your striker, let alone a £9 million striker. Now, that's not me getting on the back of Adam Ida. I'm still a huge supporter of him, and I think he'll be great for us. It's only November, and he's still scored goals this season. So, you know, he's got his positives, he's got his negatives. Today was generally quite a negative day for Adam Ida. He just looked a bit static, and that was straight away with, with that opportunity that he kind of miskicked. If you remember, Dyson Maida got a really good looking ball into the box for him and he kind of, I think it was Maida, it was either Maida or Kuhn now that I think about it, I can't remember what side it came from. You'll know what I'm talking about though, he kind of leans back on it and he, he just does that thing where he's took a, a, a whack at it and it's like come off the ankle of, a, of his foot rather than, you know, putting his laces through it or getting a side foot to it. He's just kind of miskicked it, and it's a huge chance wasted very, very early on. And from that moment, I think Adamida struggled to get into the game as a striker. Don't get me wrong, I think he'd done a couple of things in the game that was quite good. There was moments where he held the ball up and moved it quite nicely. There was one in particular in the second half where he plays a ball through to Nicholas Kuhn, and Kuhn should bury it, but he hits it right to the keeper. He'd done a couple of things right, but he just generally looked an inch... I should I say a yard off it today, um, a little bit slow, a little bit static, the word was what I used, and just sluggish in general, he didn't really look like he was he was going to find the back of the net, and uh, that's what you need your striker to do, and especially when there's a huge opportunity for him there today, starting the game, um, Kyogo has not exactly been on you know red hot form this season, it's a chance for either to really go and show the manager why he should be starting. And he doesn't take it, which is really, really disappointing. Um, because I'm a huge fan of Ida, and I want him to be in contention for starting every week. But if he plays like that, you can understand why Rogers favours him coming off the bench. Um, a game where you, we need physicality in the game, it didn't feel like his physicality was necessarily showing uh, this afternoon. He had a poor game. But I think that kind of came across the whole front three in the first half. I, I thought Kuhn was quiet. I thought Maida was quiet. We just lacked so much creativity, I thought. Um... And yeah, it was just one of those afternoons. You could tell that Celtic just wanted in and out. They wanted into the, interla into the international break. Defensively, we had our work cut out for us. And I think we were getting quite fortunate in the first half. I think a lot of those balls that we were trying to clear and we ended up passing straight to Kilmarnock players, 
Better teams would have punished Celtic this afternoon. It was almost as if at points in the game that Liam Scales wanted Kilmarnock to score, <laughs> which was very, very frustrating. And, you know, it was just like a number of poor clearances and stuff in the first half. The goal came at a very fortunate time for us. Um, and we didn't exactly improve going into the second. The second half, once again, was just more of the same. Uh, I thought that Kilmarnock could have had a couple of goals, they were unlucky, I mean Kilmarnock were hitting the post and forcing, Schmeichel won us the three points today, that's, I, I could just leave that as the match reaction, it was a very boring game to cover, but Schmeichel won us the three points, there's no two ways about it, without his saves this afternoon, Kilmarnock won the game. And uh, it was a huge performance from him, but second half, we just once again, we looked that bit sluggish, we looked that bit disinterested almost, even when the changes were made, I don't think they necessarily added much to the game, what I will say is, and about Celtic's second goal, the winning goal that seals the three points for us, Nicholas Kuhn, it speaks volumes about the season he's having, you know, that's a mark of a really good and reliable player, that even on an afternoon where you're off it, and I don't think he was, I've seen people on Twitter saying he wasn't that bad or whatever, and I don't think he was terrible, by no means, don't quote me saying that I, I think that he was beyond poor or hopeless this afternoon, just didn't think he looked at it, he didn't think he was at the races the way that he normally would be. <clears throat> he missed a couple of big chances as well, especially the one that I brought up earlier on, from he does pass, he should be scoring that, and a lot of players, when that happens, they just can't get themselves back into the game. They just struggle to find a way back into things and to score goals, and ultimately they become useless. And yet he still scores a goal like the goal he scored this afternoon. That is a brilliant goal with a world-class finish. And I know he was a moment away from being hooked. You know, it was the next time the ball went out of play, Forrest was ready to come on for him. And I don't know if he's acknowledged that before he goes on the run to score the goal, and maybe that's why he's done it. But... That is the mark of somebody, even if they're playing poorly, they are in form that is reliable. And people are asking the question about Nicholas Kuhn, how long will it last? When should we start conversations about comparing him to Jota, for example? Well, you know, people are curious if it's a purple patch or anything. That's the sign of a player who's not in a purple patch. That's the sign of a quality player that we have. And that is so reassuring. So, <clears throat> it's a great goal from him. It, it seals all three points for Celtic. Um... And it sends me up the road happy to be quite... I say up the road. I've been up the road the whole time. It's not like I was there this afternoon. I feel like Celtic really struggled to deal with Kilmarnock's physicality throughout the game. And, and you know, their discipline, their disciplinary record throughout the season has been poor. It feels like every week you see a player getting sent off or Kilmarnock could have happened today. You look at Liam Donnelly shoving the elbow into Casper Schmeichel. I mean, God knows why. I mean, Liam Donnelly's always been like that. But God knows why you'd want to do that to a Schmeichel, as Chris Sutton says. Bear of a man, Casper, like his father was. Um, brave, brave boy, Liam. Um, but, you know, I felt like we struggled to deal with the physicality. They were getting... And I think, honestly, in the last kind of 20 minutes, Kilmarnock fell away. And I think that's why they fell away. Because they just kind of resulted to trying to go through the Celtic players. And they should have just kept trying to play football, I think. But they decided not to. But we, we when we did try and rise to that... It came in the form of Rio Hattati nearly getting himself sent off. So you've got to be careful. You've got to, you know, when you're managing games like this, you've got to do it with a calm head, with a cool head. And I think that's where Celtic maybe lost out a little bit today in, in some of the negatives of the performance. Um, but listen, to walk away from Rugby Park with a 2-0 win when you're not playing well, on other days you lose this game. Christ, Rangers lost this fixture um, earlier in the season because they just couldn't match to a Kermarnock side that was better. So... Really proud of Celtic getting that done today. You're going to have these performances in a season where you're not the best team in the park. Um, but, you know, we still prevail because we're Celtic and we're just that good. Yeah, one of those days. Not, not a great amount of tactical analysis to do. I'm a big picture guy. More than a, you know, I'm not here for the nuances of the game. I'm here for the big picture. That's why you're here as well, isn't it? Um, yeah, great win. International break, sadly. I don't even want to think about it, actually. Do you know what? I'm not even going to get bogged down on international break. Celtic will be back after it. We'll be ready to fire on and continue with our great start to the season. Um, no more international breaks after this for a while. So, happy days! Right, like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.